Hey, what's up? It's Jared with State of Tech, and today we're gonna to take a look at the Samsung Galaxy S6 Active. Now, this phone is a lot like the Galaxy S6, which is one of the most popular phones on the market. It's currently Samsung's flagship phone. Um, and it's a fantastic phone. I had uh, an S6 before going and grabbing myself an S6 Active. Now, the reason that I like the Active is because it is water and dust resistant. It means that you could throw this thing in the water, um, take it out in harsh conditions, and it's going to be able to withstand those conditions and, uh, and perhaps survive them. It's not waterproof, um, and of course it is penetrable, but it is a pretty hefty phone and it does stand up against those elements pretty well. Internally, this phone is pretty much exactly the same as the Galaxy S6. It has an extremely fast processor, lots of memory. Um, the graphics is fantastic. The, the screen is just very vibrant on this device. Um, it's more than enough power to run Android. Um, does it lag? Does it have some little issues? Yeah, it has some little Samsung issues that typically are, are existent in most of the Samsung phones that I've had over the years. However, it's still a, a very, very powerful device um, and it performs well in pretty much all conditions. So one of the things that this phone has is a, a fantastic camera on the front and the back. Um, and it, it wasn't, uh, being the active with the thicker case and a little bit, um, a you know, a little bit different design, it didn't affect that camera. The lens, the camera, everything in it is still fantastic. It takes beautiful pictures um, with really uh, a good color depth. For a smartphone, the, the photos are great. One of the things that Samsung with the S6 kind of introduced with the front facing camera is um, a really kind of smooth porcelain effect uh, for selfie mode or, or whatever they're calling it. Um, and, and what that does is it just really smooths the skin. You could turn that off. A lot of people don't realize that you can actually turn that off and get your normal skin tones back. So like I said, what this phone is unique for is its ability to take a plunge or withstand the elements. Um, the differences between this phone and the regular S6 is that you have physical buttons here as opposed to a fingerprint scanner that unlocks the phone, which is also a button like on the S6. Um, you have physical buttons for multitasking and back button, um, which is the trade-off for having a phone that works in the water uh, per se. So in testing this uh, underwater, it works in a very similar way that the S5 Active did. It doesn't perform all of its features under the water. Uh, the screen itself basically disengages and you're unable to do any touch gestures while the phone is underwater. However, these buttons do work. And if you program uh, this side button here, which is unique to the Galaxy S6 Active to initiate your camera, you can actually launch your camera with this button on the side and then use a uh, volume button to actually take pictures. Um, so you could take underwater photography with this, uh, with this camera uh, on this phone. And I actually dunked this phone um, in a small pool at about three inches in depth, left the camera going, put a hose on it. I mean, I, I didn't test it too rigorously because I didn't want to break the phone, but I did get it wet. I mean, if I was to get, if I was to jump into a swimming pool with this phone in my pocket, I wouldn't have to worry about it. Even if the phone was in my hand and I jumped into a pool, wouldn't have to worry about it. It would, it would survive. What's really neat about this phone too, is that the, the uh, ports on it, the charging port, as well as your headphone jack are sealed, but they don't require a plug that you put in to waterproof uh, to add the water resistance. That's something that had to be done on the previous version. There was a little um, kind of port you had to pull the, the plug off of the port in order to gain access to it. To me, I, I felt like, you know, if that had slipped out, if I'd forgot to push it back in, I would have issues and I'd potentially um, end up with a damaged phone. This phone, there's no thinking when it comes to, is it you know ready to take a plunge or not? It's always ready and you don't have to worry about it. What this phone also has is a slightly larger battery than the regular S6, which for me was welcoming because I had battery issues with my first S6. 
Um, it has a smaller battery, it's a processor intensive phone, and the battery wouldn't even last a whole day. However, with this phone, I have no problem getting throughout the entire day on a single charge. The battery is significantly larger because of the, the thickness of the phone and the case uh, that it is enclosed in um, makes it uh, have more room. There's more room in there for a bigger battery. Um, what you don't get is memory or storage options with this phone. You're only going to get it in a 32 gig version. You're not going to be able to get a 64 or a 128 gig version like you can with the regular S6. Um, however, that's not really too big of an issue. I've never found on an Android phone that I've needed much more than 32 gigs, especially considering the fact that there are so many free storage options for your photos and your videos, such as Google Photos that you could just keep what's important to you on your device and delete the rest off of your phone and always having a backup on, uh, on the cloud somewhere. So 32 gigs is definitely not a problem. All of the, uh, the S Health features, like being able to take your heart rate by holding your finger over um, the sensor here, uh, and also a pulse, a pulse oximeter, um, those both work fantastically on this device. I've really liked what Samsung has done with, with S Health. They took it from something that was kind of featureless and, and frivolous in a sense, and really added some cool features in there that rival what Apple has done with uh, their health app features on the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus in iOS 8. So uh, this phone is just, it's, it's impressed me in a lot of ways. Um, the shortcomings, of course, that it has are the fact that uh, it does get a little laggy when you jump between applications. If you're really multitasking a lot, maybe trying the split screen mode while, you know, two intense apps are running. Maybe you're watching a video on Netflix and you're also, you know, browsing the web. The phone can get a little laggy, but that's pretty common with uh, some of these phones that have a lot of, a lot of modifications on top of, of the base of Android. The LG G4, which is also a fantastic phone, has these slight issues, and so does uh, Samsung Galaxy S6. So um, they're not a problem. You're not really gonna run into too many issues unless you are really using your device heavily and jumping around a lot. And even then, it's not too terribly bad. Where this phone definitely shines is its ability to withstand the elements and capture fantas fantastic photos and video along the way. Is it worth the price? I think that it is. If you are uh, considering an Android phone and you lead a little more outdoorsy lifestyle, this is definitely the phone for you. If you've ever dented your phone or scratched it really bad or anything, this is the durable phone that you're looking for. This is the one that's gonna withstand, you know, being tossed on the workbench or, um, you know, maybe a tool hitting it or something. This phone is much more rugged than any other phone out there on the market right now that's a, that's a flagship phone anyways. So some of the other things that aren't so great about it is the audio quality that you get out of the speaker. Um, out of the speaker here, it, the audio quality obviously is diminished a little bit because it has a waterproof grill on it that keeps water from going in. It lets as much sound out as possible, but it's just not as good as the regular Galaxy S6. Um, also, the audio quality when you talk into the phone isn't as good as well. Um, these are issues that you're gonna have because this phone is water resistant. However, I, I believe that you trade off some of those things a little bit and they're not that big of a deal. The call quality is still very exceptional when you're making a call. People that were on the other end of the line didn't say it was that bad, the call quality, um, but it was less call quality than uh, a regular Galaxy S6. Photos and video are equally as good on this device. You're not looking at any diminishing factors between the S6 and the S6 Active. So what it all comes down to is, do you want a phone that's a little bit more rugged, something that can withstand getting wet or sprayed with water or even submerged in water? Um, and then dusty aspects, you know, things that might typically plague a, a regular phone and clog up its ports aren't necessarily gonna happen as bad with this phone. So the Galaxy S6 Active is only available through AT&T from what I understand, and I don't know if it's gonna be available through other carriers such as Verizon or T-Mobile or Sprint or any of those carriers, but right now it's, it's strictly on AT&T. So if you're looking for this device, you'll have to either find it unlocked international version, which 
is hit or miss with Samsung phones when you're when you're looking online and you find some unlocked international version. It may come to you in another default language other than uh, English, and it also may not necessarily support the LTE channels that uh, are the LTE bands that AT and T uses. So be careful with that. Make sure you buy it from a place that has a return policy. So the Samsung Galaxy S6 Active, it's one of the better phones on the market right now. I'd say one of the best as far as durability and just all around being life proof. This is a phone you can buy. You don't have to put a case on it. You don't have to do anything. You just have to go and live life and enjoy your phone with it. So thanks for checking out this video uh, here on State of Tech. In the description below, we'll add links to a couple of places where you can find the unlocked international version. Just make sure that you look and make and see that it works on your carrier first before deciding to purchase one. Thanks a lot, and we'll see you next time on State of Tech.